Hey friends, thanks for stopping by Unveiling Dark Secrets. I'm Wendy. While you are here, please like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and helps me out. The story I have for you today is another story that I will be narrating. This story is very heartbreaking and will go into the effects of being trafficked and the long lasting effect it has. I will not say names or locations for the protection of the person this story belongs to. This is a survivor story and does come with very strong trigger warnings. Please be advised, this story may not be for everyone. I will be talking a about abuse in every way possible that started at a very young age. These stories I tell are true stories and are told only for awareness and to open our eyes to all of us about human trafficking. There are many forms of human trafficking and most of the time it happens right in front of us. It can happen to almost any of us. So if I can bring education and awareness to possibly save someone's life, then I will tell these stories. Many times the actual traffickers are people that we may know and trust. Protect your children. Here comes the story. I was only seven years old when I was kidnapped by my babysitter. He was a normal person that my parents trusted and knew. He had babysat me a few times before the kidnapping incident. The day I was kidnapped, the babysitter told me that my parents had a surprise for my birthday and that we were going to go meet them. It was my birthday that day, so I did get in the car with them, thinking that my parents were throwing a party for me or something. I asked a lot of questions, trying to get the surprise out of him, but he wouldn't budge. He ended up getting mad at me and told me to shut up. I got scared at that point and knew something was not right. After about maybe three hours or so, we stopped at this small airport. Several guys were waiting outside a small plane that looked pretty scary. The babysitter got out of the car and told me to stay put and not say a word. After a few minutes of him talking to the scary guys, an argument broke out. I tried to crouch down in my seat to not be seen, but it was too late. One of the guys yanked me out of the car. I tried to fight him off, but did not win, of course, as I was only seven. I was zip tied and thrown onto the plane. On day two of my kidnapping, I was forced to train with another girl, which consisted of us having sex with one of the guards. On day three, I was working. I had clients in and out of my room at all times of the day and night. I was never alone. I was never allowed to go to the bathroom alone, bathe alone, or eat alone. I was always threatened with a gun and was told they would torture me and kill me. We moved around quite a bit. I worked in the United States, France, Italy, and Greece. We always stayed in very nice houses, but were not free to roam these homes. I did get to eat very well for the most part, unless I was being punished. Occasionally, I did get to speak with some of the other girls, but that was very seldom. There was one time that one of the clients tried to kidnap me from the kidnappers. It did not end well for him. He wanted to keep me for himself because he was tired of paying for his visits to me. I witnessed him being murdered. I have also witnessed some of the other girls try to escape and be murdered. That is when their dead bodies had a higher price. Some clients preferred unliving bodies. Their organs were also sold. I was their good girl. I followed directions and didn't fight too much, mainly because I knew what the outcome was. I feel that is why I was one of the girls that did not have to be drugged. I also was afraid to die. I feared hell would be worse than what I was living. However, I knew that eventually they would probably kill me because I would get too old. Some women became workers when they became too old. They were not kind at all and would always tell me to be thankful I was still alive. I will not go into detail about some of my clients, but I will say they were from all walks of life and came from money. They were men and women from all over the world. I was manipulated, beaten, sexually abused, and brainwashed. I had many different aliases throughout my travels. My handlers had developed trust in me, so they didn't feel they had to keep me attached to them at all times. I was still never alone though. At the age of 19, I escaped. We were at the airport and I was able to get separated from the guards at airport security. It was my only chance to get away and I did it. I told the border agents I was seeking asylum. 
My keepers were arrested right away and were sentenced to 70 years in prison. After a year, I did reconnect with my parents and did visit my own grave. It was very awkward meeting them again. The whole time I was captured, I knew I had parents, but eventually forgot what they looked like. We do struggle with a relationship today. I do go to therapy often. I am socially isolated and I do not date. I went back to school to get my GED and also started university. I pretty much keep to myself. I don't go out or have friends. Mainly, I trust no one. I even find myself not trusting my parents or brother. What I went through will forever affect me. It all started with one person we trusted, my babysitter. There are so many monsters out there and human trafficking will be a forever fight that will not easily be won. This is the end of this young lady's horrific story. What she went through is hard to comprehend and understand that this happens. Was there something her parents could have done differently? Probably not. She and her parents trusted this babysitter. He had babysat before with no issues or red flags. Most cases of trafficking happen by people we know. Let me know in the comments what you think about this story. Do you have a true story you would like me to tell? Stories of the paranormal, a mystery, a true crime story. I would be honored to tell your story. My email will be in the video description, so reach out to me. Until we meet again, stay vigilant, stay safe, and be blessed.